Hey everyone, this is Luminous coming at you with DCDH number two, Dota Commentary Dota Help, where we look at very, very specific details of a particular Dota game and talk about how to help the newer and, and intermediate players to improve by examining those little details because it's in my firm belief that Dota is not play optimally and there's a lot of room for improvement if we start playing very, very top-notch detail games. And today I'm going to be talking about tri lanes, which from personal experience I find a lot of players having trouble, um, especially in the newer and, and intermediate players. And even some of the pro players make a lot of mistakes in tri lane. Tri lane is one of the hardest things to do well in the Dota game. It takes a lot of experience, it takes a lot of um, practice to play really well. And one of the best ways to learn is to actually learn from other players' mistakes. So in today's uh, DCDH, we're going to be looking at some replays. Um, just a couple minutes from a couple games. And uh, we're going to look at what are the, some of the mistakes that these players did. And hopefully we can learn um, from some of them. And the first replay I'm going to look at is University Soldier versus MYM. Uh, play for the Razor Global Challenge and I will be speeding through the uh, picks and bands of course and of course um, I'm not going to speed through the picks and bands for every single game but this one give me some time to do some introduction now for trialing it's very very there's three things that's extremely extremely important to decide who wins the trialing who wins you know everything um, first thing is being in position now, being in position, it's a very murky low topic, whether you're in position to stun, whether you're in position to be singled out by the opponent team, whether you're in position to rescue your teammate when they're stunned. There's a lot of factors of being quote-unquote being in position, and hopefully by the end of the day, we could get a better understanding of that. Secondly, which is also very important, is um, chain stunning properly. And I will talk about uh, during this analysis why chain stun properly is very, very important as well. And finally, um, the most important thing to trialing out of the three I'm going to be talking about is knowledge. Um, there's thousands of thousands of trialings. Just having the general knowledge, having the general experience is very, very important to playing a trialing successfully and playing a trialing efficiently. Keep in mind, again, in DCDHS, we're going to be looking at very, very fine details of efficiency. And today we're going to look at how these lanes are going to be inefficient and we're going to learn from those mistakes to improve our trialings better. Now, first we're going to have um, MYM trialing on the Scourge and we see Melk on the Venge, Pusher on the Witch Doctor and Playmate on the Sven. On the other side we do see an Earthshaker, um, Sniper and the Crystal Maiden. These are played by University Soldier once again. And I'm gonna look at this um, this particular game twice to talk about a lot of things we could learn from this game. So I'm just gonna play this and um, I'm gonna play this in Sentinel View. So and let's see how what kind of mistakes they will be making and I'm gonna just hit play and go now the first thing you notice that this uh, Earthshaker is just going into the sent a, a search force and this is very dangerous thing of course his team is still close by and look at what happens next they split up or they will split up soon Earthshaker going play towards good job so far his teammates staying around and then they make a split Earthshaker is going to be placing wards right here and I'm going to pause pause imagine if the sentinel the MYM lineup ganks these line ganks this two right now one of the primary uh, primary the most important thing about Earthshaker in a tri lane is this defensive fissures and look at how far they are you could say that already totally out of position for the sentinel team uh, maybe if they have it's better for them to journey this way to place observer wars and it's just completely out of position for the sentinel team frankly unfortunately they did not get ganked now the second part i'm gonna pause right here look at how again out of position the sentinel team is of course um, they don't know that they're currently up against a tri lane here but if you look at the mini map how many hero is missing there's a nevermore bottom there is 
a um, nothing what bottom so far four heroes on the sentinel is missing so mym is either doing a very good job of hiding themselves very well or they're gonna do a three-man ganks or at least a two-man gank um, on one of these sightings whether top or whether it's bottom so um, not knowing this this sniper this crystal maiden especially without the support of the earth shaker should not really be in the horrible position like this for all they could know there's a witch doctor uh, could be standing here all they could know there is a venge standing here for all they could know there could be an invisible hero um you know ganking them and let's look at what has really happened come on give me a good observer reel there's a witch doctor here there is a visible sven here um, Melk is already juking my search. And, and just look at the difference here. There's three heroes surrounding the uh, Sentinel. And I mean, this is the epitome of being out of position. And I mean, I will just let you watch this as, as what happens next. There, we're going to see some ganks. We're going to see some stuns. Um, nice. Uh, this chain stun from this Earthshaker completely late to the party. Um, the Crystal Maiden gets outstunned. Uh, we're going to see the sniper going down next. And that is just two stuns, um, uh, too many stuns for the, uh, for the Sentinel team to handle. And you can see completely being out of position will result in basically complete wipe from a, 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 a tri lane. Tri lanes, are, tri lanes are designed to be dangerous, to have the killing power, to take advantage of any mistake on the other side. And you can see the MYM already taking a lot of advantage from the uh, positioning mistake of a universe soldier. Now I'm going to watch this clip one more time and look at the many mistakes that the MYM team also have made and and just talk about it you know why is this significant and why is it important in, in a later ramification of, of these uh, trialings okay so this is the exact same clip that we just saw a second ago and we're gonna watch it one more time and notice how of course knowing that what happened already we're gonna see a venge magical mix up first followed by a sven stormbow and then a um, witch doctor cask and you can notice that how melk is positioning himself perfectly um, going on sentinel view they do not see the uh, the vengeful spirit just just on the edge of the fog so very well played by uh, venge very well played by venge here and i'm gonna watch this very slowly and we're gonna nitpick at everything that mym is doing so Notice how the magic missile is going to be going off with the Crystal Maiden. They don't choose to target a sniper, um, even though sniper is a frail hero. Maybe they're afraid of a, a, a freeze bite um, coming from the CM. Um, it's an actual stun, so you probably better choice to pick up the Crystal Maiden first. I'm not going to argue which of the two choice here um, is better. Uh, but definitely the uh, MYM has chosen to go for the Crystal Maiden, which is okay. So as you know that the magic missile has two seconds stun time, so that means in a perfect dota world you're going to see eventual spirit and the sven railing on this um maiden for two seconds or maybe one and a half and then start casting a stormbow we're going to see what a uh, playmate does here next playmate immediately stuns um the crystal maiden with the stormbow now you can make the argument yeah well sniper and crystal maiden was pretty close so if you stormbow there you could get two targets which you know that is a logical argument now, if I had the StarCraft 2 replay rewind feature, I could have rewind, you know, just half a second back and ask, why didn't the Sven Stormbolt first? I mean, those two heroes are already very clumped up. And if you could, you know, on YouTube, just scroll back, you know, a couple of seconds and watch. Those two heroes are very clumped up. They could just switch up the initiation process and have Swarm, uh, Storm Stormbolt first, Sven Stormbolt first. And then with the Magic Missile follow up, the stun time is exactly the same. And you know, MYM has maybe wasted one, one and a half second stun time. And um, of course, we already know what happens. We're gonna see, you know, nice cask from uh, Pusher, and they will actually get both kills with the magic uh, missile cooldown, and um, they get the kill. So now, one thing I'm, I'm gonna point out here, of course, they're gonna get a sniper kill here. You can see that both Sven and the uh, vengeful spirit clarity up because they're charging up their mana and whatnot that's a good habit of pro players when they throw out stuns when they're out of mana to get more mana for for your next stun and notice what this earth shakers player is going to do he's going to cancel the Sven clarity as he already did and he's going to immediately switch over to the uh, vengeful to cancel his clarity as well so well played by the uh, well played by the uh, earth shaker 
and I mean that was a big mistake the MYM team they did not play it perfectly but in the end they still got the two kills now you might be thinking well you know Luminous you're just making a big deal out of nothing um, they got the kill so what the hell is a big deal and I'm, I, I'm gonna tell you that a lot of times in Dota um, there's heroes that are gonna be running away with one single hit left uh, one single cast off and that's because people did not change them properly and that's because people did not animation cancel uh, animation cancel properly and uh, luckily this replay has a uh, has an exact moment for, for to prove my point and we're gonna watch this uh, trialing on, on the second time we do see everyone's responding and everyone's back so keep in mind that the MYN team at currently they do have the level advantage here with Sven at level 2 um, and with all these heroes barely at level 1 so um, the level advantage because of their successful first gank is in uh, in favor of Sentinel so we do see um, both sides are just you know lasting I'm just waiting for the the moment where the second initiation comes so again um, Melk taking a good job at hiding his spot and uh, which doctor coming in the flank coming in uh, from the right so we're gonna see what happens next So they're gonna go on the, um, they're gonna go on Earthshaker first, and again we do see the Magic Missile initiation being casted first. It's already being casted. Um, personally, again, I would have preferred the uh, prefer the uh, Sven casting first because that is a perfect storm bolt for two hero here. But again, we're gonna watch it at half speed and what, watch what happens next. Magic Missile being casted here, and we do see immediately two more stuns we do see a cast being thrown off we do see a, a storm bolt thrown off that's a lot of stun time wasted on all three of these spells and again you're thinking to yourself luminous what the fuck is the big deal uh, we do see a lot of spell being thrown off and they're doing a significant amount of damage on this earth shaker and they're just hitting they're just hitting and they're just hitting and Hitting one more, oh, 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 wait, Earthshaker, one HP, one HP. Now you tell me whether if they just change them a little properly, just a little bit, maybe a f half a second a little bit better, this Earthshaker would not be alive. So again, here here comes a follow-up argument. Well, okay, Luminous, um, okay, well, they just got unlucky. Um, you know, whatever. And we're going to see what happens next after with this Earthshaker surviving. He's going to throw off a Fisher. Um, so Crystal Maiden is going to pick off Witch Doctor with the kill. And notice what this Earthshaker player is going to do next. He's going to salve up and clarity up immediately. He's going to join back the action immediately. Keep in mind that Earthshaker Fisher cooldown is 15 seconds. Earthshaker is going to cast another Fisher. And they're going to pick off Sven as a result. So you tell me. A fraction off of a mistake by MYM team has resulted of two Fisher from the Earthshaker, two kills for the University Soldier team. I'm telling you that every single little mistake in a trialing could turn off in a huge, huge turnaround. If they got the if they got the Earthshaker, that would have probably been a kill for the Earthshaker, Earthshaker, and maybe on a kill on a Crystal Maiden as well. She was pretty low. And so instead of having a 4-0 advantage in favor of MYM, now it's a 2-2 tie for both teams. So you can see that every little bit tiny detail does matter in Dota. And I'm, a, I'm telling you, to um, when you're playing in Trilent, you got to take advantage of Chain Stun and use it properly. And again, if you just want to look at that scene one more time, scroll back a couple of minutes and look at how Magic Missile storm a storm bow and the cask was casted on the earth shaker all at the same time and they just wasted a lot of chain sun opportunity so that's very very important to chain sun properly and i hope you guys after that example i show you um, could understand why chain sun is very very important okay so moving on to the second game of today um, this game is between star boba and alienware Alienware DG uh, played in the ADC tournament, and uh, we do have Star Boba on Sentinel here. Um, the um, Star Boba's uh, Witch Doctor, Crystal Maiden, and Sven, and the, on the other side of the lane we do see Vengeful Spirit, Kunkka, and Lich. Now, in this video, I'm going to showcase you targeting and uh, being out of position once again. So um, there's going to be very big mistakes coming coming from Star Boba. 
and very good thing that uh, the Alienware DG is doing with their positioning and with their targeting. So um, I'm going to play the clip and just talk about what are some mistakes they're doing.